Okay, we're here in Pace Studios in New York with pianist George Winston. He's going to play us some selections off his new record, Spring Carousel. Welcome, George. Thanks for being here. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Take it away. This is called Pixie, number 13 in C, parentheses, Gabbage. It was a cat I knew that influenced the song, too. Thank you. That was great. 
Thank you very much. Also inspired by the late, great New Orleans pianist James Booker's playing. And he had a song called Pixie that uh, I play sometimes. And this one's Pixie 13. I was inspired by his Pixie to uh, kind of serendipitously came up with a bunch of other ones. And I define a Pixie as a, uh, like his song Pixie, a blues pro type progression with mm -hmm. the chords and the uh, left hand kind of stays in the middle of the piano, not going real low. So over time, I just uh, serendipitously came up with a, there's a uh, 14 others. Right. So, you know, on this new record, which is uh, Spring Carousel, you know, it's, it's 15 original compositions. So yeah. can you just tell us a bit about how, you know, how you came how you conceived this record what made these 15 songs come out of you at this at this point in your life your career yeah in uh late 2012 uh, early 2013 i was at city of hope uh, hospital and cancer research institute in duarte california near los angeles having a bone marrow transplant and they have a village close by so after i got out of the hospital i stayed at the village because you can walk to your doctor appointment it's something they provide or people out of town, live out of town. And I had access to the auditorium piano. So I was practicing for when I started touring again and a bunch of songs just kind of happened. I never composed on purpose, but they just happened. And um, these 15 kind of work, seemed to work the best together to make the statement. And it's a benefit record for City of Hope's cancer research. Yep. And that the music always tells me what to do. So without City of Hope, the record would not have happened, both the treatment and the access to the piano. Right, yeah. That's a, I mean, it's an incredible story. Uh, so, your, your, so tell us a little bit about your next selection and how that fits in. Uh, this is one called uh, Muted Dream. Uh, the piano's muted with the left hand muting the strings closest to me. And I dreamed the, the structure of this piece and I went, went to the piano later, it worked. And I've dreamed things before, I don't think anything else ever worked. So it's called Muted Dream.
Thank you. That's really phenomenal. Where did you hit upon the the technique of, you know, where did the, the muting of the strings with your left hand? Is that something you've been doing for a long time? Uh, since the, um, maybe 1983, 1984, blues guitarists sometimes kind of mute the heel, mute the uh, guitar while they're picking with the heel of the right hand. And you get that sound. So if I'm muting with the right hand here, you get... So I got that from the blues guitarists doing that kind of rhythm with the muting. And I always come from the rhythm and blues stuff first. And I said, okay, now the other way I play melodic, the folk piano. So let's mute with the right, mute with the left hand and then pluck with the right hand. So it's a little bit like guitar. Then the thumb would be playing the low notes, the fingers playing a middle line, and then the... Uh, sneak high notes in with a little finger. So a bit like guitar, not exactly because you're striking, you're not plucking, but a bit like the right hand's doing all the playing of the notes, mm -hmm. like playing normal guitar if you're fin playing finger style. I see. And is that something that you, you build into a lot of your compositions, or is this your, you reserve it for certain kind of moods and, and sounds? Well, whatever the song needs, there's... Um, the song will tell me it needs something else. And so, you know, it might, it might be a pluck note, like, you know, going, it might be a harmonic, like going like. Mm -hmm. So if, if a song needs something, um, it needs another sound. Much, been a bit like if you were playing organ, you'd say, I want to use this organ setting. Right. And so here, say if I was going to play a line here, you could go like, play it normal. Now here's muting. Here's harmonics. So I could go. But it's really, I'm not really experimenting. It's more the song needs something. And it's like being thirsty. If you're thirsty, you'll find the water. It's like the song needs something. I've, I've got to find it. And over time, oh, try this, try that. or Right. Well, one of the great things I think about, you know, our, our videos is that we get to see musicians really sort of playing their instruments uh, rather than just hearing it. And you can see how a lot of these sounds are really are really produced, yeah. you know, when you reach into an instrument and play it in a different way. Um, so tell us about uh, your, 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 your third song with us today. Uh, well, the Spring Carousel album had, has three kinds of songs, basically. Uh, the um, carousels which I regard as swirling kind of pieces. They're kind of circular, they're kind of repetitive, inspired some by Steve Rush's work, and mm -hmm. um, maybe a bit music boxes, maybe a bit, you know, the, just the swirling of the galaxies and the planets and the rotation. And they're played middle or the high part of the piano. And then uh, second part, the second type of song is uh, our bouquets. Like the, dream, the Muted Dream is a bouquet, a ballad, a slow piece. Mm -hmm. And then the third kind of pieces are Ms. I call Ms. Mysteries. They're the up-tempo pieces. Although Pixie 13 is kind of not one of those, but it is up-tempo. So those are the three kind of pieces that ended up on the record. There are actually 58 songs. And, you know, I don't make them up that much. It was just... It just happened. And then these 15 work the best together. Uh, and it takes a long time to pick those and what order and what is it once. Not about the length of the album. It's just, what is the music telling me? Mm -hmm. I always do what the music tells me. I can't always do it, but I endeavor, you know, work on it and be able to play it later. But the music always tells you what to do. I don't have to work on that. Right. I can't always do it. And so what was it telling you for this next, uh, for, your, for your third song with us? Well, this is called More Than You Know. It's one of the bouquets. It's, mm -hmm. it's a ballad. Take it away. Thank you. 
Thanks, George. That was really beautiful. Thank you. Um, so I know that you've got uh, you've got a performance coming up here in in New York, I believe, on Friday. Yes. At the Sheen Center downtown, uh, where you'll be playing the piano, of course. But I also know that you have recorded uh, a lot of solo harmonica pieces, and that's something that is near and dear to my heart. And I was wondering if we could uh, you could grace us with one of your with with something from the harmonica, if, if possible. Um, Yes, I've always, you know, it's it's amazing uh, to watch someone play a a harmonica with only one mouth, but playing multi parts coming out of it. Uh, and I, you know, I'd love to hear one if you got one. I got, got one. that from the late Sam Hinton, who we recorded all his harmonica solos before he passed on. <clears throat> Excuse me, and um, I heard him in 1975 playing solo harmonica. And basically, what you do is you split the harmonica in two with your tongue. Put your tongue right in the middle of the harmonica, and then the melody's here, mm -hmm. and the accompaniment's on the left part. So it's essentially, it's like playing the piano with your mouth. It's like left and right hand. The left side of the mouth is the accompaniment, and, and the drones, and the bass notes. The right side of the mouth is the melody, and when you, when you lift your tongue off, you get a chord, because you're blocking the notes. When you lift your tongue off, like if I was gonna go, like in a waltz. Mm -hmm. And I got that all from Sam Hinton. Everything I do in harmonica is something that I learned from my two main harmonica mentors, Sam Hinton and Rick Epping, who were also recording. So I'll do an Appalachian piece based on uh, dry and dusty. Sounds good. <laughs> George, thank you so much for joining us here at Pace Studios today. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Best of luck on the tour. Thank you.